after a brief aside to set up Knott's Landing, the Ewings return to what they do best, scheming against one another. Okay, well that's not fair. JR returns to what he does best, and everyone just reacts to him. In this case, JR is trying to manipulate his way back into the helm of Ewing Oil after mortgaging South Fork. Bobby is awakened by John Ross's cries and assumes he'll find Pamela trying to calm him. Instead, he finds Sue Ellen holding little John and Pamela in the study. Pamela says she's catching up on work from the store, but Bobby accuses her of masking her disappointment that Sue Ellen has stepped up as JR3's mom. JR overhears the argument and makes a quip that nearly gets him knocked into next week. He has his own problems, though, as Jock has taken over the reins of Ewing Oil and made JR his errand boy. JR realizes that if Bobby were to step in to run it, he'd be a lot easier to manipulate especially if he were focused on his marriage instead. Ray Krebs shows up at Donna's house to find her cleaning out after Sam's death. Ray meets Sam's son, Dave, who seems like a nice guy. Much to Ray's delight, Donna is willing to pick up where they left off. Liz Craig tries to make a lunch date with Pam, but Pam snaps at her and tells her she has work to do. Bobby shows up to take Pam to dinner, but she says she absolutely, positively can't get away. JR plants the seed in Jock's brain. Have Bobby and JR co-run Ewing Oil so that Jock can spend more time with Ellie. You know, being a good husband. This is a great example of JR's manipulation, preying on Jock's guilt over the Amanda situation. Bobby is hesitant to return, especially since he's running the ranch, but Jock begs him. And Bobby isn't one to disappoint people. Jock tells Ellie about his plan, but she's still melancholy about the loss of family the way that she pictured it. It's clear that Jock is just not enough to make her happy. Ouch. Bobby stops to have a drink with Ray and reunites with Donna. It's amazing how smoothly Donna Culver just slides in with the rest of the cast especially with the easy confidence Susan Howard plays her with. JR corners Pamela as she returns from work and warns her not to leave Bobby alone too much, or he might start to do another form of wildcatting. He also grossly offers to give Pam a taste of the Ross. Anytime you want to find out, it's easily arranged. To which Pamela retorts he's not man enough and hurls the Sue Ellen Cliff affair at him. Not for me and Sue Ellen to produce a son and heir. Something which you and Bobby seem to be capable of. Sue Ellen and Cliff. That one took them both by surprise. The argument escalates to a nasty place and JR runs off to have a drink. Pamela slinks off to admit to Bobby that she messed up and told JR about Cliff. And this spurs an argument between Pam and Bobby about how Pamela has been burying her guilt over not being able to have a child by working at the store. A drunken JR sneaks into the bedroom to promise a sleeping Sue Ellen that he's going to destroy Cliff and Pamela for all of the humiliation they've caused. We get a visit from the great character actor Barry Corbin as Sheriff Fenton Washburn. He asks Jock and Ellie if they can remember anyone on the ranch about 30 years ago who might have been looking to get shot between the eyes. Not surprisingly, neither Jock or Ellie are of any help. Ray tells Bobby he's thinking of asking Donna to marry him. Normally I'd say don't rush it, but you know, you gotta lock that down, Ray. She's not gonna be on the market long. At therapy, Sue Ellen admits that seeing JR weak and desperate for validation made her feel attracted to him again. But then he went back to being the cruel, arrogant man he was before the Southeast Asian oil wells came in. She admits that she thinks Dusty might secretly be cut from the same cloth as JR, and she doesn't trust herself to make the jump. Dr. Elby tells her that she's ignoring all the progress she's made so far. Bobby tells Jock he'll come back to Ewing Oil and confides in him that Pamela is distant since the miscarriage. Jock encourages Bobby to have patience and not rush into anything like adoption. JR's requisite fiendish plot of the episode gets underway as he accidentally stumbles into store owner Harrison Page. Page is played by the legendary Mal Ferrer, which, along with Barry Corbin, shows that the guest star budget must have gotten a big bump. Page tries to lure Kristen away to work at the store, but JR says that that's a dead-end job because Pamela has been working there over a year and hasn't really seen much advancement. In fact, if that changes and Pamela is given more responsibility, JR might just find a way to bring Harrison in on the Asian oil well deal. At home, JR refuses to hold Lil' John and tells Sue Ellen she must be cured, so Dr. Elby will no longer be needed. Ever the acid-tongued maven, Sue Ellen gets a zinger that sends JR running for the second time in the episode. Just beginning to discover what Dr. Elby really has to offer. Bobby confronts Pamela about her working too much and demands that she stop working. He's even willing to adopt. She says she's sick of thinking about it and talking about it and it works she doesn't have to do either of those things. JR hovers with glee. At the hotel, Ray pops the question, but Donna says it's too soon. If she gets married right after Sam's death, people will laugh at Sam's memory. 
thinking it was played as a fool by a young wife with a stud stashed on the side. Ray agrees to take some time, but only until his House of the Damned, built on the skulls of those who died unjustly, is finished. Liz Craig pops in to give a pointed congratulations to Pamela because Liz is being shipped to Houston so that Pamela can take her position. In a line of dialogue that is a bit clumsy and on the nose, Liz tells Pam that she now has a job that's guaranteed to break up any marriage. That's a little too conveniently tied to Pam's insecurities to come off as natural dialogue. To back up the point though, Bobby tells Pam that they might as well get divorced if she's going to be working and gallivanting around the world so much. After all, he would never take on a position that would require him to be in the office all the time without consulting her. I've been coming back to work here at Ewing Oil. But Pamela is the one with issues here, let's not lose focus. Anyway, we're out. This one is straightforward like the last episode. Dallas, like most 20 plus episode shows prior to HBO blowing up that paradigm, spent the first half of the season setting up story threads and then yanking them at mid-season, only to lay out a new pattern after the mid-season hiatus. Well, we've had JR's Southeast Asian oil well deal, and Pamela's neurofibromatosis, neurofibromatosis, and Jock's secret marriage, and Miss Ellie's breast cancer, and Sue Ellen's identity crisis, and those things aren't going away necessarily, but they are about to take on new meaning as we further the story with the communist revolution, two paternity revelations, and the identity of Ray Crabb's new skeleton friend. On its own, this episode does have a number of great moments, though. Pamela's button-mashing argument strategy with JR really did touch a nerve. Sue Ellen and Cliff which is rare for JR and Pamela because usually he gets the best of her. Overall though, this episode is a big win for JR, neutering the plan to keep him in check by not only convincing Jock to step aside in favor of Bobby, but simultaneously putting a plan in motion to distract Bobby. JR really does step up his conniving game in this one. And, as with all little bits of success JR has, he's only encouraged to dial it up to 11. 